Welcome to A Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray and I serve as a pastor here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center. And today our devotion is in Acts chapter 26. Paul has been brought forward to King Agrippa where he is about to give defense of himself against the accusations of his Jewish, Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, the, the interesting thing to me though is that Paul does not use this uh, occasion to very uh, focus on his own defense, but he also uses it as an occasion to present the gospel of Jesus Christ, and more specifically to talk about the resurrection. As a matter of fact, he says in verse 6, And now I am standing trial for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers, the promise to which our twelve tribes hope to attain as they earnestly serve God night and day, and for this hope, O king, I am being accused by Jews. Why is it considered incredible among you people if God does raise the dead? So then, I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So basically what Paul does is he puts himself in the place where his accusers uh, are now. He was there. I was where you are at. And so Paul, in utilizing this particular defense, brings a highlight to the issue of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without the resurrection, we have no hope. He goes on to talk about how he vigorously opposed the Christians. He pursued them. He imprisoned them. He even uh, voted against them when they were put to death. And it says in verse 12, listen to this carefully. While so engaged as I was journeying to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining all around me and those who were journeying with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew dialect, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. In these verses of Scripture, we learn that Paul utilizes his own personal testimony and encounter with the resurrected Lord to not only defend himself, but to present the gospel to a very impressive crowd that is all around him. I believe that our personal testimony is important. But one of the things we must realize, as Paul did here, is that it is the power of the resurrection that is the key to our testimony. Listen to what he says he has been called to do. Uh, when we get here down to verse 17, he says, he's been called to rescuing you from the Jewish people. God is rescuing him from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. And here it is, verse 18, to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in Jesus Christ. Paul basically boils the gospel down uh, to the core value of resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He says it's to open their eyes so that they can see the reality uh, that they are actually in darkness and need to move into the light. That they are under the dominion of Satan and need to be under the dominion of God. That they can receive forgiveness of sins and receive an inheritance from God. But none of this is received by following rules. None of this is received by adhering to a strict code of conduct as he was taught uh, in his youth. But what it is, is rooted in faith in Jesus himself, who is raised from the dead. The very man that he thought he was opposing was a dead man, appears to him as alive and well. And in this appearance, he, he brings him to the place to say, listen, when you put faith in me, a resurrection occurs. You come out of darkness and you're in light. You are under the dominion of Satan in that darkness, but then when you come to Jesus who is resurrected from the dead, you are now alive yourself. You see, and we're not only alive, but we're under the dominion of God. The incredible thing about this is 
This is true of our lives every single day. We cannot afford to live without the resurrection power of God because no man has it in himself to be able to live above the darkness and the influences of this world outside of faith in Jesus. It's not faith in rules. It's not faith in strict codes of conduct. It's faith in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. A core value of the gospel is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because without resurrection of power in our lives, we remain in darkness and we remain under the dominion of Satan and sin. So I thank God today for his resurrection power. Some people are uh, hesitant, you might say, to express their dependency. But dependency and faith in Jesus Christ is the key to receiving the resurrection power that leads to life eternal. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray if my friends who are listening today are bound up by religious rules and regulations that will never bring life. Lord, only the resurrection power of Jesus Christ can lift us uh, uh, out of the place of blindness so that we can see, can lift us out of the place of darkness and bring us to the place of life, can remove us from the dominion of Satan and put us in the dominion of our God who created us. Lord, we want to remain in that dominion where you love us and care for us and help us to realize it, it is only faith in you that allows us to do so. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening to A Pastor's Perspective. We pray that you will join us Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our continued study in the book of Genesis and on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our regular morning worship. Have a great day.